Hello again. What we had done before was we worked with amplitude. And basically what that means is if I put a number in front of the sign, if I multiply the number, you know, like 2 sine of theta, what happens is the graph gets, you know, sh not shifted, but it's like it's stretched. It's still the same period, but it's, you know, something like expands it. And if it's a number smaller than 1 that I'm multiplying in front of the sign, well, then I'm just kind of squishing it. Well, this time what we're doing is we're working on vertical shift. And it's exactly like it sounds. Hopefully everybody understands that, but if not, that's fine. Vertical shift means that, like, I'm taking this graph, and I'm going to go, you know, like, kind of just pick it up, and, you know, it'll be solid, it'll be like a piece of metal, like this, and if it's plus a number, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to kind of, like, put it like that, and if it's a minus a number, then I'm going to take it and put it like that. Pretty cool vertical shift. So, I have two problems here. Now, this y equals sine of theta is this graph as best as I can do it. I only did it from 0 to 2 pi, or 0 to 360, but the graph would continue to go like that, and it would continue to go like, like that. I can't do backwards, unfortunately. So I'm going to show you what this graph happens to look like using the table. Now let's go ahead and figure it out. Uh, the sine of 0 degrees is 0, but when I add 2 to it, it's 2. So I figure out what the sine... Please go to the dock area. Maintenance, please go to the dock. <sighs> Sine of 0 degrees is 0. So I put a 0. But after I do that, I add 2 to it. So the answer is actually 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. But when I add 2 to it, it's 3. Sine of pi is um, 0. But when I add 2 to it, it's 2. Sine of, um, where is it, 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. But when I add 2 to it, it's 1. I hope that people are noticing the pattern that actually goes on here. What I, what I basically do is I just uh, you know, do this, do these values first, and then I do the middle values. And I like using increments of 45 unless you play around with this, then you gotta kinda do something different. And then the sine of 2 pi is 0, and two, uh, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2, 3, 2, 1, 2. Goes up, down, down, up. Notice, though, that there's not going to be any negative values assigned. This is the lowest value, and this is going to be the highest value. So the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Uh, but root 2 over 2 plus 2 is 2 plus root 2 over 2. That's really confusing. Uh, root 2 over 2 is 0 0.707. So 0 0.707 plus 2 is about uh, 2.707. So we'll just say like 2.71. Approximate. Now this time I'm not actually using exact values, I'm actually using the decimal. You don't have to, you could put 2 plus root 2 over 2 if you wanted to, but I like that. These are all 2.71. Oh no, they're not actually. Ooh, I almost made a mistake there. Almost. Uh, sine of 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Uh, root 2 over 2 is 0 0.707. 0 0.707 plus 2 is 2.71. Ooh, I'm so glad I actually didn't make that mistake. Uh, sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative uh, root 2 over 2. So it's negative 0.707. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 to it. So it's like 2 subtracted by 0.707. Now this is actually not very pleasant at all, to say the least. You know what? I don't want to sit there and try to figure it out, so I'm just going to go 2 minus 0.7. You can do 0.707 to stay consistent, but I'm not going to. 3, that becomes a 1. That's a lot easier for me to do. So this is actually 1.3. And this is 1.3 as well. It's actually more like 1. Point, I don't know. I'm not going to try to figure it out. It's less than 1.3, but it's really, really close to 1.3. I want to say it's 1.293, but that's close enough. So you can actually call that 2.7 if you want to. So when I graph this, and I'm going to have to do this in a different color so it actually makes sense, 0 and 2 is right here. Uh-oh. So, this is going to really change my graph. Not really. Uh, pi over 4 and 2.71 is like right there. That's 3. Good. Why did I even have to check that? I have no idea. And that's uh, 1.3 and 1 and 1.3 and 2. So that's the new graph. Well, it wasn't drawn as perfectly as I'd like it to be, but the vertical shift was 2. There. So basically what I did was I took this graph and I just moved it up two spots. That's it. If it was subtracted by 2, I'd actually 
move it down two spots. That's what this number does. If it's not with the quantity, then it's a vertical shift. If it's with the quantity, then it's something called a phase shift, which means it shifts from left to right. So we did amplitude, which, you know, expand, oh, not expands, it's like somebody kind of stretches it up or compresses it down. We did vertical shift, which is like somebody actually picks it up and moves it up and down. So we're going to do phase shift and see how that goes. Actually, I think we'll do one more graph where we use all three at the same time. And hopefully that won't be too terrible. It's not going to be great, but it won't be too terrible. Uh, but with that said, have a good day for right now. Bye.